most valuable commodity I know of is information. Wouldn't you agree? The law of abundance is natural and God-given. Since the beginning of time, philosophers, visionaries, and great spiritual leaders have talked about the natural abundance of our planet. The difference between being aware of our natural abundance and owning a hefty portion of it is one of the main spiritual lessons we come to the earth plane to learn. It is the art of controlling energy and manifesting your thoughts and ideas. We live in a 3D world that reflects back to us the energy, words, feelings and thoughts we put out. We're not all well versed in the manifestation technique, and it takes us time to learn it. But that of itself is a great blessing. Imagine a world where everything you thought, felt or said suddenly appeared in front of you. Sure, you could materialize a million dollars on the kitchen table in 30 seconds flat. But each time you had a disquiet or a fear, you would also have a monster standing up against the refrigerator trying to eat your lunch. We come into this sluggish 3D world with the blessing of a special protection. We can have thoughts and feelings that don't instantly materialize in front of our eyes as they do in some of the spiritual dimensions. So the fact that you can't just materialize money may seem a hindrance but it's also a part of a greater protection, which allows you to learn the art of manifestation without getting hurt in the process. It isn't hard to see the abundance of our planet. You only have to look at the fruit trees in the fall, the lushness of life. We know that money is not rare, and that abundance is natural. Buckminster Fuller calculated that if all the wealth of the world were divided equally among its citizens, each and every one of us would be a millionaire. It's natural, therefore, for everybody to be abundant. Our natural state is rich. The thing that gets in our way are the feelings of lack, despair, confusion, and the inability to master the marketplace of life. More often than not, we get in our own way. By placing in our thinking obstacles, detrimental ideas, and strange resentments that we have to clamber over to get to the honeypot. I'm sure by the end of this book we will have sorted that out, and you'll remember what you already know, namely that life is energy, money is energy, and there's plenty of both. Start by reminding yourself that there's loads and loads of money around. Perhaps it sounds a bit silly, but you ought to begin every day by telling yourself there is no shortage of money. In fact, there are untold trillions of dollars, yen, pounds, d-marks, and so on, swishing about, more than you could ever spend. It's vital to understand that, and to remember that there are millions of millionaires, lovely rich people to whom you can sell ideas, products, energy, and so become a millionaire yourself. We've been programmed by the system to believe that there are shortages and lack, and that uncertainty is normal. It is not. The idea is a psychological racket designed to control people and keep them in line by making them fearful. Don't buy it. Most people suffering from a limited mindset have no comprehension of just how much money there actually is available to anyone with the will to step up and collect. Look at the ancient holy books. You will see they are full of hope and positive expectancy and abundant affirmations. In the Bible, for example, the words of Jesus are abundant. He lived in abundant times. There is no place in the Bible which says that Jesus wasn't making ends meet. Even though Joseph and Mary were supposedly poor, at the time of his birth. However, because we are taught a fear of power, it is naturally assumed that somehow money is evil, that rich people are dishonest and crooked, and that they feed upon little people. While the economic forces of our planet are certainly stacked in favor of the big institutions and governments, 
there's nothing stopping each one of us from gathering our fair share. It's hard to align to money if you think it's evil and nasty. But once you come to understand that money is neutral, that abundance is natural and spiritual, it's easy to see that having money does not necessarily deprive someone else. Many of the greatest teachers have given credence to this idea that abundance is spiritual and that it is your feelings and your thoughts that create the abundance for you. In fact, if you are wealthy, more often than not you will be disposing of your money commercially and charitably, supporting people around you and adding to the overall velocity and flow of wealth. There are trillions of dollars zipping about electronically on any given day. Those electronic signals are literally passing through your body right now, as are all the TV and radio signals that are in your local area. If you stop and think about the millions flowing through your hands right now, imagine making a slight flick of the wrist in order to halt some of that loot in transit so it sticks in the palm of your hand. A flick of the mind is faster than a flick of the wrist. Money is good. Greed is not good. However, there's no reason why you can't be very rich, stinking rich in fact, and still be extremely spiritual and a wonderfully generous person, aligned to the God Force with a huge heart and compassion for everyone you meet. One of the inner concepts we have to grasp early on is that the whole of our reality exists in a wave-particle duality. What the wave-particle duality means at a quantum level is that our supposedly solid reality is not actually solid at all. That everything exists in an oscillation or a hazy wave. It is ill-defined. This hazy wave condition remains the same until a particle is observed whereupon it changes from being somewhere in a hazy state to being solid and existing in a defined place. The metaphysics of money and our ideas around money and abundance follow much the same path as the laws of quantum physics. In order for money to become part of your life, it has to go from a hazy wave state of ideas, dreaming, wishing, yearning, and vague maybes, into a solid state, a dollar bill, credit in your bank account, a coin in your pocket. If you can convince yourself at the very deepest level of your being that there is no lack, no unfairness, no discrimination, that making money isn't hard, you suddenly open yourself to greater wealth. This is because you've collapsed your self-denial, your aversions and resentments, and you flip from the insecure, hazy wave state that says, where's the rent coming from, to the solid particle state. Suddenly you know it's coming, because the check's in your hand. In collapsing your hazy wave money dysfunction, you open yourself to endless points of abundance. This simple click of the mind opens the door metaphysically. Remember, all points of abundance, points in our 3D reality where money is actually delivered, where transactions take place, are solid particle states, not hazy waves. So to make the manifestation process work for us, we have to put aside all our hazy wave ideas of lack. We have to become centered and align to the solid symbols of abundance. We have to know we can do it. When thinking about your money flow, say to yourself this, there is a way, and I will definitely find it. This affirmation works well for most all of life's little problems. Take a little time over the next few days to stop and concentrate on things that you consider to be manifestations of abundance. Go to places where wealthy people hang out, Look at the symbols of their wealth and affirm the abundance of this earthly dimension is holy and good. Yes, money can be used for evil purposes, but in itself it has no energy. To make your feelings right, you've got to agree that abundance is natural. You can't look at abundance with anger or envy. 
You can't become abundant if you exclude yourself. So when you see a person in a limousine wearing fine clothes, if you say consciously or subconsciously, what a rat, that lifestyle's not for me, poverty is holy and good, you deny your potential. It isn't easy for most ordinary people to look at extreme manifestations of wealth and join in the idea. The ego is too racked with jealousy or inadequacy and judgment. We'll look at a palace and we'll say, that's not my kind of house. We'll see expensive things and say, that's far too much for me. To be abundant is simple, but first you have to be able to join with your feelings. It's not vital that you can instantly visualize yourself in the presidential suite of a five-star hotel, providing you don't deny yourself the possibility. In other words, you may say, I don't have to stay at the Grand Hotel, but it's certainly something I could take in my stride. It's certainly something that I'm pleased exists. Moreover, I'm thrilled for the people checking into the presidential suite right now. In this way, you switch from the negative affirmation that money is bad and poverty holy to the idea that money is neutral, that abundance is natural and God-given. So, acknowledging abundance as a daily affirmation is a part of your disciplined action plan. Everyone can get their head around the idea that abundance flows. We watch it daily, flowing and not flowing. Here's the subtle trick to being in the flow. But first, let me remind you that a positive attitude goes almost without saying. The more you moan and affirm you don't have enough money, the more it slips from your grasp. Maddening, really. But when it slips away, that of itself becomes a negative affirmation of how unfair the system seems to be. Of course, it isn't unfair. It's just energy in motion, responding to feelings. To those that have more shall be added, and to those who don't have, a chunk will be taken away. So the first rule of flow is to constantly tell your mind you are rich. There are many manifestations of wealth that aren't necessarily cash. Love, friendship, nature, sweet sensations, pleasing emotions, etc., etc. Rich is a way of viewing life. So tell yourself, I want to view the world with a kindly eye. I want to view it richly. Remember, your unconscious mind, the powerhouse of your soul, doesn't know if you're rich or not. If you tell it you're rich, it will accept that as gospel. You have to believe in luck and flow and goodness, even when cash-wise, things might be bloody awful. Perhaps it goes against the grain, but if you see your affirmations as just that, affirmations, you can affirm your abundance and good fortune even when things look a bit dodgy. The poorest person has things to be thankful for, so affirming your abundance is an act of gratitude and humility, as well as a way of keeping yourself in the flow. People get into trouble understanding flow because they can't tell the difference between effort and struggle. So they'll get an idea and everything tells them it's not working and yet they plug away, doggedly going through the agony of it all. Because someplace back there somewhere, someone told them that whacking their head against the wall was an honourable way of conducting themselves. Not quite so. Struggle causes a lot of pain, because it involves a lot of negative emotion. Struggle is also very hard work. All ideas that are holy and good and honest, ideas that serve humanity and yourself, will have a positive energy of their own. When you head out to materialize a money-making plan, it will gather momentum. It's as if the universe at large leads you step by step, showing you the way. That's flow. You meet the right people. You sit in the right seat on the plane, and next to you is the very person you need to connect with. It's a wonderful thing watching flow in motion. We all know what it looks like. When it's working, the trick is to be able to pull back when things aren't flowing. As I said in my little book, Life Was Never Meant to Be a Struggle, struggle is effort laced with emotion. As humans, we are required to exert effort to get things done. So if you're cycling up a hill delivering loaves of bread, you'll expend calories peddling. 
effort is natural. When one's energy expenditure gets wrapped in loads of negative emotion, that's when you flip to the unnatural, from effort to struggle. At that point, you should pull back and ask yourself loads of simple questions, questions that highlight silliness. Of course, you need perseverance when times are tough, but perseverance mustn't trip you into negative emotion. That will destroy your dream real quick. So if things aren't flowing, watch the signs very carefully. What little adjustments can you make to get things moving? Is your plan realistic? Do you have the wherewithal to pull it off? Are you missing some component? If you're missing a piece of the jigsaw, what does that piece look like? Is the piece inside you, or where will you get the bit you need? It's okay to go up the path a little way, only to discover it's not right for you. As long as you realize when things aren't working, and pull back. The trick is to evaluate and ask yourself, is this a stupid idea or not? Am I going about it ass backwards or what? Do I need this suffering or is my suffering voluntary? Remember, it's not a defeat to pull back when things aren't right. You can always wait for things to change. The fool plugs away regardless of the signs. If you are aware, you'll pull back or perhaps continue slowly forward, watching carefully, making adjustments as you go. Remember, don't be impatient. Things always take longer to materialize than you think they will. That's because our minds can move faster than the 3D reality in which we all exist. Also, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fail sometimes. See these as mini-seminars you attend to teach you the tricks of life. Of course, the main trick is to be flexible and easygoing and light-hearted, and to learn, learn, learn. Life's a seminar. We learn by stuffing it up. So be kind to yourself. Although flow often seems a form of magic, it actually stems initially from order and planning. It's much easier to experience a great good fortune when you're organized and ready and able to receive the abundance due to you. So ask yourself, am I ready? If someone shows up right now with my special opportunity, can I respond? Am I flexible? Can I move and go in an instant? Flow is energy in motion. So you have to become the embodiment of energy in motion, i.e. flexible, fluid, and fast on your feet. In passing, let's look at risk and reward. To make money, you will have to take risks even if it's just your time on the line. The key to risk-taking is knowledge. For example, gambling is betting on an unknown outcome. Investing is betting on known possibilities. The difference is knowledge and the quality of your information. So when the amateur blackjack player is pitching his money on the run of the cards, he's gambling. But the professional card player has knowledge and additional information. He can count cards as they come past and make informed decisions about what is to happen next. He's not gambling. He's investing his money in a planned and reasonable way on what might seem to others a random outcome. His knowledge and ability change the random nature of the game into one of near certainty. He is not struggling. He's working just as the croupier and cocktail waitress are working. So struggle can be avoided by collecting information, lots of it, learning and watching and topping up on your game of life. Moving through life with ability and knowledge, you go from gambling on life to investing in life. We all have to accept risk. Crossing the street is a risk, just one we're used to. The trick is to have enough information so that you're betting on outcomes that are almost certain. When the outcome isn't certain, you ought to design your involvement to ensure there's an easy and inexpensive escape route. Remember, as I've said before elsewhere, never go into anything without figuring out where the exit is. Never commit until you have to, and not until you have enough information. Try to make sure there's a back door 
to whatever commitment you make. Your feelings are enormously powerful. They are your extrasensory perception. The mind can deduce from what it already knows and guess at an outcome. And millions are lost every day using this intellectual guessing method. But your feelings are more accurate, for everything is energy. So any deal or investment or any involvement with others has an energy of its own. That is its thumbprint, if you like. Use your feelings to stay in the flow and keep away from trouble. Remember, if an idea feels wrong, it is wrong. That's not to say that you should trash a deal whenever you have a moment of disquiet. It's just to say, if suddenly there's an energy shift, you're in tune with your feelings. That shift will alert your feelings. When something feels odd, stop and notice and take stock. Your feelings guide you away from trouble. Half the trick to making money and being in flow is staying away from deals that don't work. It's the deals you walk away from that make you rich, as much as the successful deals. So put your feelings into everything. Meditate and become a satellite for your subtle feelings. The way to build up your sensitivity is to ask, ask, ask. Constantly refer back to your feelings to confirm your direction. If you're in a meeting, mentally reach out to the other people there and imagine your arm extending to touch them in the heart. Then mentally pull your arm back quickly while centering your mind, blanking it, and ask, How does this person feel? Edgy? Arrogant? Angry? Excited? Crooked? Safe? Loving? Kind? And so on. Your first impression will be the correct one. The litmus test to referring to your feelings should be used many times a day. Energy shifts constantly, so you'll want to be aware, especially when dealing with other people. How does this situation or person feel right now? How is it different from the way it felt last time I checked in? Is this deal I'm considering for real? Or has something changed? What's the upside? What's the downside? Is the downside far greater than the upside? Is the risk worth taking? Then ask yourself how you feel. Are you happy, comfortable, flowing along, or is there something bothering you? Staying in the flow is only really a matter of staying close to your feelings. Struggle comes from a lack of awareness of self and from poor quality information. It is also compounded by the inability to turn back when the energy on a particular path peters out. Stay in the pocket. Be aware. Shift and change. And never get into anything you can't walk away from. Keep these rules and you will always be in the flow. The action of flow is one of being alive and aware, ready to step forward fearlessly. You have to move towards your target. So do something each and every day that improves your situation and takes you closer to your dream. Sometimes that action may just be a simple thing that grants you more stability or more order, like perhaps you take a day out to tidy up your paperwork. Order of itself is a positive thing, is it not? Rarely do opportunities find you. Usually you have to be moving towards them. So heighten your ability to stay in the flow by heading out, talking to people, making contacts, stepping out from where it's safe and cosy, pushing against your comfort zones, reaching out. That's how the faucet of flow is turned on, by generating energy each day so that the universe at large can engage its magnificent laws and deliver to you even more energy. Try this. As well as moving towards your goals physically, through action, say, simultaneously clear a path on an inner level by blowing love and light out ahead of you. For example, if there's a person in your way, your boss, say, start every morning by sitting quietly and seeing her or him in your mind's eye. Bring them up close to you so you're almost eyeball to eyeball. Then breathe a long breath in and expel that breath out into their heart. No matter how antagonistic you may feel, send them light and love. 
Do that ceremoniously eleven times. They will change. You'll see. If you need them out of your way, don't wish them harm or evil. Just do this. After you've finished the eleven breaths, visualize them very small in the palm of your hand. Look down on them from above. Look at them standing there in your hand, an inch high, say. Then hold your hand up to your mouth and expel a short, sharp breath at them. Literally, blow them away, saying, I release you with love and light. Go in peace to your highest good. But go! Using this method, I got rid of a bothersome IRS tax agent who'd been harassing me for eighteen months. A few days of this metaphysical hurricane, and he quit the service. The next bloke assigned to my case was so overworked and confused and stressed out that he closed my file with no more objections. If, say, you're off to an important meeting today, breathe in the location if you know it. See it in your mind's eye if you've been there before, or visualize the people, or at worst, just imagine the meeting. Breathe in eleven times and see love and light to that location. Remember to tell your mind approximately what time the meeting will be. So say, I'm projecting this love and light to such and such a location for use between the hours of noon and two o'clock or whatever. Use your inner power equally with your outer strength. That inner power places good energy ahead of you. It gets rid of dodgy people and helps close the gap between you and money. The most valuable commodity I know of is information. Wouldn't you agree?